computer. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, June 12th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello, I'm the Wombat. <clears throat> and our guests today are John Richards from across the pond over there in London Way. And we got Dread Pirate uh, Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. Ahoy there. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods holy books and superstition and if you think you're the only non-believer in your town well you're just not here in knoxville in the middle of the bible belt we have a group of over a thousand of us and we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break wombat what are we going to be talking about today we're going to be talking about putting a surgeon general warnings on holy books religions and even atheist literature see what we come up with yeah i would think so (laughs) Before we get into the meat and potatoes, I'd like to throw it up to our own carbohydrate master in chief to lead us into our weekly invocation. All right. I'm called to invoke the power of the true creator of the universe, the drunken tolerator of all lesser and more recent gods and maintainer of gravity here on planet Earth. May the great flying spaghetti monster rouse himself from his stupor and let his noodly appendages ground us in our seats. Raw. Raw. Oh, I think this should be our, our prayer. Uh, instead oh, of this. Yeah, yeah, it, should yeah, this. Uh, it should be this. It should be like this. Okay, you know, bad like, habits. Like bad habits. Mustache or something. You can, you can call out the, the former Christians pretty easy. Okay, so John, yeah, I yeah. think I saw your hand up. What was it? Did you have anything? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I thought maybe a useful warning to be to put on a Bible could be. Oh, you're going straight into the topic. Hey, shouldn't straight. I do that? Well, I, of course, but well, I want to. I want to. What's what happened? To, whatever happened to foreplay? How are you doing? How are you? Yeah, doing? I, oh. I, I, <laughs> I need the foreplay. <laughs> okay, John, right, how yeah. you been? Yeah, we should minimize it. I Tickle think. Our yeah. fans. How you been yeah. since last week? Yeah, well, uh, I'm a I'll, man. Not, not only am I no good at foreplay, but I'll be all over. It. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, George Brown. Welcome. Hey, George Brown. Welcome to the show. I like the new headphones. We're waiting to see if you can get your audio connected as you come in. Yeah. But you look like you're straight out of, you know, Space Odyssey. I, I really yeah, love that's the sleek slick. design. Stylish. So we can't hear you, but we're going to wait for you to pick up. John Richards, how you been since last Can time? you hear me now? Hell yeah. yeah. John Richards, how you been? Okay. So how am I doing? Well, okay. I had a birthday yesterday and I'm not telling you how old I am. Okay. Because of- because I, at the moment I can get away with looking 20 years younger than I really am. Okay. No shame in being old. That's survival. <laughs> like at, it, it, once you it, take the dogma out of it, it's like I yeah. live longer than you. That's an achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, suffice it to say that most people my age are already dead. <laughs> All the more reason to brag in my head. But anyway, yeah. happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Yeah. So right. I've had a good time. I've uh, I've been... Because I've missed you for a few weeks, haven't I? I haven't been mm. able to join in for various reasons, but um, all of them genuine. You know, sure. what I but, to say. <laughs> but we have cut up on GAN, Gaffius, or I'm sorry, Global Atheist News, and review, that's been fun you. too. And review, yeah. right? Yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah. yes. And that, that will happen again tonight. And mm. I, I've already put, I'm, I'm compiling a list of panelists because as you know, I have, I have a, a larger list than actually appear. And because, of course, some people can't do it every week. Right. But tonight you'll hear that, um, mm-hmm. you'll be pleased to hear that Ty is a confirmed, Tercia is confirmed, uh, v- Victor is confirmed, uh, David Orestein, who joined us for the first time last week, he's confirmed, Dread oh, is president. hoping to join us, and Esther is hoping to join us. But unfortunately, I won't be there. That's so. no. <laughs> David, David, by the way, president of the American Atheist Society, or, or what was Well, it? yeah. Atheist I, International. Yeah, International. I, pro- there you go. I promised him I wouldn't talk about that. Maybe I should have warned you about this in the preamble. He re- he's resigned. Okay, oh. okay, 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 okay. So, so we've had presidents and former presidents. You was it a religious coup? Everybody. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. So he was a president for about two weeks. You know, he, oh my. 
it's, it's important to go for records. I, you know, everyone has a speed running <laughs> competition. Yes. I'm sure we can make that somehow. Yes. Dread, <laughs> I'm so happy to see you, man. How you been? I've been doing all right. Thank you very much. Uh, I, uh, I passed this on to uh, uh, John earlier this morning that um, I have filed a, a complaint with the BC Ombudsman's Office against uh, the Special Programs Division of the Ministry of Justice. And uh, so I, I thought I'd just read out what I am seeking. Sure. Um, so the, the freedom of religious expression is guaranteed under 2A and 2B of the Char Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Whereas current government identification utilizes facial recognition technology to accurately capture an individual's likeness for the purposes expressed under relevant legislation, Whereas in cases where a head covering is worn, provision is available to those whose religious belief includes the wearing of a distinctive head covering, insofar as such a head covering does not interfere with facial recognition technology, hmm. accommodation is granted to persons who claim the right to accommodation under that provision. Whereas the current accommodation appears only to be provided to persons of or recon of recognizable demographic populations by virtue of their skin color native language or ethnic presentation, whereas no government agency is qualified to make any determination whatsoever on a person's claim to religiosity, whereas a registry of permissible religions by which accommodation is either granted or does not and should not exist. Therefore, we seek the remedy of being able to provide and have accepted photographs of passport quality wherein we are depicted, depicted with religious headgear consistent with our religious faith oh. in a similar manner as those who do so being members of other faiths that enjoy the accommodation without question, right. evaluation, and or discrimination. Right. Oh. And the most, and the, most absurd, the most bizarre thing is it's not a protest in a sense. It's not a, hey, we're trying to make a point here. It's I have an actual religion and you're not letting me do the same thing that other religions that you're letting yeah. Do, yeah. do so why who, who, are, who are you to decide that that's just really exactly bizarre. larry what's that's that exactly it. yeah you just hit the nail on the head with the last thing who are you to decide that yeah uh, governments cannot be in the position of de deciding which religions are real and which ones right. aren't or exactly. which one they like and which one they give privileges right. to and which, yeah. ones right. they don't. which ones it's they like, promote and which ones yeah. they discourage it's all right. or nothing yeah, well, and, and this was the thing like when i went to supreme court over this uh, with the human rights tribunal uh, the judge says, well, you know, are there, would you agree that there are elements of satire in your, your religion? And I said, there may be people who, uh, you know, act, you know, uh, conduct themselves uh, with sat satire and whatnot, yeah. but I can't speak for anyone. I can't speak for everyone. Right. It's a, it's a fallacy of, uh, consistency, right. That, uh, right. You know, just because one person does one thing it means that everyone's bad yeah. at it or doesn't yeah, exactly. decide who's a true believer and who's not. There's yeah, exactly of, it's special and, and, the, and the point, the further point was oh, dress fired so up. what? So yeah. what if it's right. satire? Exactly. Mm. But yes, yeah. you know, it's it's you know, all make believe right at the end of the day. Have you even realized this? I'm just saying, but like uh, <laughs> I was also saying, like, hey, you know, how many Christians have got a divorce or wear fabric of multiple cloths yeah. or mm -hmm. eat shellfish? Or, yep. you know, the list goes on. Like, you'd yep. be hard pressed to find someone who's Christian that actually adheres to any of the or all of the tenets of Christianity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. you know, prays, but then does terrible things when they think no one's watching. Like, yeah, they right. get all the privileges of the institutionalized, yeah, yeah. you know, privileged having like a major religion on their back. But well, that's for you just to get a hat on for your ID right. photo, it's like, well, how many people in your club take it seriously? Like, what, what are you even talking about? Like, how is that even? Yeah. A Sorry. Well, interestingly, um, I was contacted uh, just last week by a, a gentleman in Ontario who has his driver's license with um, his uh, tricorn or with his condor on. Mm. And, uh, and a fella in Nevada just uh, showed us his new license yesterday. Good. So Ooh. other jurisdictions are allowing this to happen. So it should yeah. be right across the board. I, I bet you'd get a lot of Sikhs with their turbans on in photographs. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah, that's a given. That's why I referred to that. Yeah. George Brown, second and a half. Yeah, I just wanted a, a point of cl clarification. 
Um, so if I understand this right, you are claiming to be the member of a religion. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Okay, so what if you weren't claiming to be the member of a religion? How, how would it play out? Well, they wouldn't allow it because they would yeah. just consider it a hat. That's just a hat at that point, which yeah. is still a this... weird condition. Oh, a weird condition at I the end of the day, it. where yeah. it's like, hey, I I want to wear this hat in my ID picture because I always wear this hat, and that's yeah, yeah. the way to identify. So like, no, well, you can't no do it religion. You have a make believe supernatural friend. It's like, oh, okay, well then. Yeah, so no religion, no hat. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. It's and, a very and again, weird. like I say, with, the, with facial recognition technology. This this whole point about wearing or not wearing or not allowing people to wear hats is yeah. moot. It's yeah. completely yes. irrelevant. Yes, that's right. They don't, no, it doesn't consider the hat. No, because right. my my passport photo doesn't know I've got a beard. <clears throat> oh phone, wow! Yeah, my phone my phone yeah. still recognizes me. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and the most I've bizarre that's the most bizarre thing because I can anyone can grow a beard. Well, almost more than half the population of Earth can grow a beard. Some may not want to, but some totally can. Larry, what's yeah. up? And you got the, the problem with what's a hat? I mean, is a balaclava a hat? Mm, right. <laughs> if yeah. it is, it wouldn't help much on an ID. Yeah. Right, and right, then, right. <laughs> and where are they going to go next with their specifications? Are they going to demand that we have a particular type of hairstyle? Right, right. The, <laughs> I mean, truly, the, the, the line should have just been, hey, don't interfere with the facial recognition, but do whatever you want after that. Yep. Because as long as we can recognize your face, we're fine. Yep. It's all good. It's all good. That's exactly. Don't wear a disguise. But like for the most part, if we can use our technology to figure out who you are, you're good. You keep moving. Yeah. All right. Keep keep doing the good fight, Dread. Uh, we appreciate it. Eric just joined in. Uh, Looks like you're on vacation. What's up, buddy? Hey. I'm here on vacation and for work. Nice. Nice. I hope you have a good time. It looks like, where are you at? If you don't want me asking. Tell me. Uh, Greece. Israel? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Greece is correct. Very, very cool. Wow. Oh, so we America. do have an international show right now. Where in Greece, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Athens. Yeah, wow. That was the Parthenon right behind yeah. me. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Let me know. I'm if you closer to I'm closer to John than I'm closer to you guys. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You and you're also, you're also on the beach near Athens. Oh, nice. Well, uh, close to a beach, but yeah. yeah. And, and let me know if I need to mute my mic because there are some cars downstairs. I'm happy to do so. No, you're totally fine. We appreciate having you here. Thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's your impression of the Greek language, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it is um, it is interesting. Uh, I have not been able to pick up much of it, it except they say uh, you can say merci, which is French for, for thank you. Interesting. Uh, and, and that's acceptable. Um, okay. But other than that, a lot of people, they look at me and they can tell I'm American, so they speak English. Okay. Yeah. Works for me. Works for me. I do like yeah. the Greek accent. I find it's like that's there's me. Spanish, which I like, and then Italian in my mm -hmm. head is going to sound so American. But Italian yeah. is like Spanish yeah. plus more syllables, right? It's just like, hey, I need to go to this. And then it's like, yeah, 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 that's Italian. But Greek is <laughs> yeah. like that times 10. There's like, we put all yes, the syllables right. in the language. It's words, <laughs> words are this long. Yeah. And all the letters are backwards. Mm, yes. Yeah. And, and it's great that they, they use math to explain all their books and stuff like that. It's great. The yeah. language of math. Uh, let's see. We're going to wind up everyone uh george brown you looks like you're busy right now larry how you been i'm doing pretty well um just playing games riding motorcycles uh, working mostly eight to five but um uh, spending a lot of time in vr through my quest too Gee i have to say that if, if you consider yourself a visual person and one who really enjoys the the visuals of movies and things more than anything else get virtual reality it yeah. is just awesome yeah, right. you Incredible. and it looks like they figured out all the problems in the third iteration. So the Quest Two is actually the mm -hmm. third model that they've come out with because, mm -hmm. and they came out with the Rift, then the Oculus, and yeah. then the Quest. So I'm glad be aware. they fixed it because yeah, yeah. It be like aware that uh, Quest Two is a Facebook product. Mm. So if you're not on Facebook, you may have trouble getting everything uh, going the way you want. But I'm glad you're having fun. You're riding motorcycles. Oh yeah playing video games you're living mm -hmm. the dream of every 12 year old basically right now it's like 
Yeah. yeah if you yeah. can't do it at 72, when can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to come and visit me and bring me some coffee from Knoxville. Nice. Yeah, why not? Why not? George, how you been? Want to catch up with you before? Uh... Well, no, nothing nothing really special. As, as you notice, I look like a Martian with these things on. And, I was going to um, say cool astronaut, but go for it. Martians. Yeah, what, Princess, I, what I've been Princess doing Leia. is modifying... <laughs> modifying cheap junky headphones to improve the speech comprehension oh, okay. so i've i've glued foam I've, I've glued foam rubber to actually decrease the bass response of these phones to to make uh, everybody clearer to me on zoom meetings got it uh, you took out the mid tones with some foam that's very good i, like I that. took that yeah i took out the i mean every the so long. everybody says um you want to get more and more and more and more bass in your sound that i'm getting less and less which is mm. what i want you know mm. it's an interesting thing i had my mom over here and we did a uh, a hearing oh, yeah. test just for the fun of it she's hard of hearing so it was interesting yes. to see where her hearing was at because we want to listen to music together and so mm. i wanted to know how do i how should i adjust this music eq oh. so that she can appreciate it closer to how i'm appreciating it with her mm. with her implants in yeah, so we yeah. did a hearing test and it's like her her low range is gone, more or less, but her high range is even higher than mine. So she Whoa, hears things really? like 25 hertz, or no, not 25 hertz, like uh, 15,000 or something like that, like something really high. And I'm like, so you can like hear if the, like the speakers even have electricity going to them. It's like, yeah, I can hear the headphones are on right now. Like I get the, the, the sound interference and yeah. I can hear like that's on and I can hear that that's on. I'm like, oh, that's so crazy. That's cool. So yeah. People can hear different things. That's Sorry. a very unusual kind of hearing loss mm. that she's well, got. It's hearing loss, but she has these implants in her head that lets her uh, oh, I basically see. take I see. sound and convert it to an electrical signal so she can hear it again. Oh. Oh, is By that the way, cochlear implant? It's a cochlear implant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has them now for like about four years and oh. sometimes she just turns them off. Guys, there's so much danger though with implants though. I wish someone put like a little hazard label on them because there should be doctor's warnings for things. And I was thinking about this with religion. Atheists Segway, been, segway yeah. alert. Segway, segway alert. spend a lot of time <laughs> talking about advocacy, talking about critical thinking, talking about the dangers of religion. For what? For what? You know, like what's, what's a good analogy to explain that? And why is it so important to us? Well, the way I put it is if I was going to see a friend of mine smoke cigarettes, I would say you have the right to smoke cigarettes. It's totally fine. But you should know that you're actually ingesting a poison. You should know that you're going to increase your healthcare costs, which is going to affect me. You should know that your life expectancy might drop down, which affects the quality of life. And as me, as your friend, I want to spend as much time as I possibly can with you. There are a lot of conditions that make it such that smoking isn't necessarily a good habit to develop if you're already a healthy-minded person. And every single religious person I've met is a person that could have not been religious or not been uh, uh, adherent to a dogmatic pattern of thinking. And that's an opportunity lost. And so I wish there was like a Surgeon General label, similar to how there is on yeah. cigarette boxes, mm. on the Bible, mm. on the Quran, yeah. on yeah. certain late re religions, but also on atheist textbooks too, because I'd be interested in seeing what they say. Oh, sure. Question everything, for sure. Uh, <laughs> May uh, make the, you paranoid. No, the, ser <laughs> the search for truth involves questioning. So question exactly. everything. So yeah, let's we do a round table and figure out what would you put as a label and what would you put that label on? Uh, John Richards, I know you're first in line. Go for it. Okay. Well, I put the Bible. I, we have this sure. sticker on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll all hit it. May raise expectations to unrealistic levels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write these down because I think these are actually really good. So what do you mean by that? Would you mind elaborating just a little bit? Well, it, it provides, um, it suggests that you might be entitled to things that you're not really entitled to, an afterlife, you know, and um, uh, uh, no, uh, no inconvenience from the, the Satans of this world and, you know, general protection by a benevolent God and none of this is realistic. Mm. Very, very good. I like it. Okay, okay. May raise expectation to unreasonable levels. Unrealistic. One, unrealistic, unrealistic levels. Okay. Yeah. I also like unreasonable too, because generally, same same boat. Dread, I'd love to hear what you say. Do you have one for the Bible? 
for the Bible. Yeah. Mm. Putting you on the spot. Like you mean the Christian Bible? Any of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Okay. Because of course I have my own gospel. Ah. <laughs> Give Please me the Christian course. version first, and then you can throw in that one. How about that? Okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. Just so um, we can flow. May lead to excessive belief in invisible friends. Oh, may lead to excessive belief in invisible friends. That's great. Well, yeah. you know, the thing is, there is a, there is a, you know, if any Christians are watching the show, there is a automatic off putting uh, feeling that you get when you call God. An, inv- an imaginary person or an imaginary character yeah. but an invisible friend is very much what god is even in the most explicit sense because if someone said hey look at god it's like well i'm looking at a tree it's like i see the tree but i'm still looking for god and you're saying he's your friend right yeah then that's an invisible friend you have an invisible friend mm-hmm. and you are leading to excessive beliefs in your invisible friends what's up dread uh may also lead to uh chronic episodes of hypocrisy <laughs> <laughs> chronic episodes of hypocrisy i love it okay i've got got another okay john going ahead eric you're next get ready be sure to use your best cherry picker (laughs) (laughs) i like that make sure to use your best cherry picker all right eric you have a surgeon general warning for the bible yeah i'd like to steal a quote from uh from hitch uh dread you're gonna appreciate it i think and I'm, I'm probably going to slightly butcher the quote, but I think the, the, the spirit of it uh, is here, which is Surgeon General's warning. Um, this gives you a gold-plated reason to stop thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and I, I think in, in all seriousness, it, it's the idea that if you, if you ever want to get to the point where you don't want to think about anything anymore, like, oh, you know, how does rain happen or you know what happens after we die or or how does you know gravity work or any of it you just want to not think yeah and instead just introduce some you know magical properties then here you go read this book and then and then you can ah I, you know what i don't have to think about that i don't have to stress about you know not knowing uh i just know now instead of instead of just saying i don't know you can go sure. to the book and say ah he did it so, I like it. What was that? What was that rule? Yeah. One more time. Say it one more time. Uh, uh, I believe the quote is: uh, "It gives you a gold-plated reason to stop thinking." I'm just kind of a like a paraphrasing. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Really I'm, yeah. Blair, I'm going to throw this up at you. Oh, wait. Can I ask one more question about Greece? I'd love to see. I, John, I see you too. <laughs> Uh, Eric, what yeah. in your opinion yes. is the religious tenure in Greece? Because you know you're in the land where there are like, yeah, you know, Apollo and Ze- what, yeah. is Zeus. One of them? No, no, no. Athena, Poseidon, Poseidon, and Poseidon. Athena. Like, yeah, is Christianity like permeant there too, or is it like old gods? What are Wait. we talking about? It, it well, so it was it, interesting, and I don't, I, I don't want to take too much, and I can talk about this sure. in more in detail later another time, but. We, we did a monastery tour and to me that was so fascinating because our tour guide I swear she was an atheist because she kept like throwing in these like little interesting like side notes and sarcastic sidebars about things you know everything about Greek it, uh, about the Greek gods was all mythology mm-hmm. right but then anytime she talked about any of the, the, the Christian stuff of course you know it was like the, the Romans coming in or, or, or yeah. uh, other influences. Yeah. And it was, it was, um, yeah. it was like, they said this, but I think it's more plausible that this actually happened. And yeah. she would break it down very skeptically, which I really appreciated. But I think Love overall, the, the gist here is that, um, you know, all of the Greek stuff is mythology, but we believe in the ortho, the, at least the Orthodox, um, you know, believe in the, the, kind of a christian way so it's um it's still pretty heavily influenced by, by the so the romans here, right? still have some aftertaste in here but there's some good minds out there as well at the same time yes i mean and and, and i think they really uh despise kind of the turks obviously for obvious reasons um but then also no offense john but 
you guys came and stole a bunch of the Parthenon and you're keeping it in a museum and you won't give it back. So wow. bad on you. Give it, give it back. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lead we'll to John's apology before we go to the break. John, apologize. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my forebears 300 years ago. I mean, anyone would think that you can be guilty in for you, the actions of your ancestors. Yeah, this, is true, like, true, true. Yeah. this is like yeah. being crucified for, besides, for what uh, Eve did, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Besides, if, well, if anybody's going to apologize, we should turn it over to Dredd. He's Canadian. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, I, actually, I would be in favor of taking a very accurate plaster cast of the, uh, yes. the these artifacts, keeping them in the British Museum and giving the Greeks back the yes. crummy old ones. Nobody would know the difference. Most sure. people don't even right. know they aren't looking at the authentic copy of the Mona Lisa. Well, yeah. like, nobody exactly. cares. Different, right. mm -hmm. different guys, colors, different colors. Okay. Guys, how about this? We'll, uh, we'll come right back after the break. We'll go to John, Larry, and then George Brown and myself. Surgeon General warnings for what, what was the question? And then we'll we'll refresh you the on the break. We'll refresh you on the break. No problem. Guys, okay. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay. Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Because we'll be right back after this short break. Cool. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk for a minute about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. That makes us our, having our 20th year now, and we have over 1,000 members, almost 1,100 now. We have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria every Tuesday around 5.30 and go to about 8 o'clock. Look for us inside at the high top tables or outside on the deck if it's, the weather is pretty. We're usually the loudest and happiest group. Tuesday nights also see us having a Zoom meeting for those who don't live in Knoxville or just don't want to get out. You can, If you want to join us, uh, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll send you the link. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Meetup, or knoxvilleatheist.org, which is our homepage, your home site. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. one. Um, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, we're talking about putting Surgeon General warnings on holy books and what we would put as a warning label on those books. That's the topic of the show. I saw John getting really excited about a comment. Let's hear it. Well, I think we shouldn't just restrict it to health warnings. I think we should do like Amazon does, you know, recommendations. Oh, so, nice, so, nice. So it would be for the Bible, it would be people who bought this also <laughs> bought the God delusion. <laughs> I like it. Good. Very good. I like that. I like that. I like that. I love that, actually. There's so much we can go with that. Dread, what's up? Well, I just wanted to point out yeah, go my gospel. It. Yep. The gospel of the flying spaghetti monster. And I would say the Surgeon General's warning should be may cause jocularity. Yes. Jocularity <laughs> and uh, being and, like and may cause stuff. one to not take oneself so seriously. Sure. May also increase chances of eating pasta right let's let ah, yes, like, of that is honestly the most damning thing anyone can say about the book may the increase plan. carbohydrate intake uh -huh. which can still be balanced with a proper nutritious meal but you still have to be aware uh, my my surgeon journal warning for the bible is never near as good as your guys is mine was pretty simple it's just is not a cure for death and i <laughs> and i like the idea of you can have these holy books simple. but just know you're still going to die. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way out of it. And if you want to think Simple. something else afterwards, that's fine. But like, make the point clear. It's not a cure for death, period. Larry, what do you think? Oh, sure. Uh, sounds good to me. Uh, since souls have never been proven to be existent anyway. But anyway, my sticker would say, may contain mythical beasts and unproven stories. Present it as true. 
and may lead to gullibility, self-harm, and paranoia. Yeah. Self-harm, not to mention paranoia. lots of other wow. things. As a side wow. note, the stickers won't help if your indoctrination begins well before you can read. Uh, so here's another recommendation, uh, if you, if you like, if you're if you're ready for another one. Hmm. Yeah, There's people who bought this this Bible also bought the audacity of hope. <laughs> I get the pun. Obama's book. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I get it. Yeah. The uh, the the weird thing is, so there's a Surgeon General warning on cigarettes right now, but there's still cigarette smokers, right? Yeah. And I think I think what we're trying to take away here is, you know, we weren't going to be able to stop people from smoking by putting a label on it, but I think what we can do is to help to increase honesty for like the next generation or put some sort of inhibition for people. Who may come into the religion in in George's sense without the indoctrination and just being like, oh, what are all these guys doing here? Uh, maybe I'll hang out with these guys every Sunday. That seems nice. And then they read the book and they're like, whoa, what? You guys see this on the book? We don't talk about that label. It's like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna put this book down. See you guys next. Week. See you guys later. Maybe at the disc golf course. Well, you, George you, Brown, you, you forgot to that. call on me. Well, uh, I don't have very much to add because I figure I should know what I'm talking about if I say anything, but I don't know what I'm talking about because every time, I've, as I've mentioned before, every time I've tried to read the Bible, I fall asleep. Mm. So I mm. really don't know a whole lot about what's in it because I slept through the whole thing. Mm. So it's like, you know, did you see this movie? No, I, I woke up at the end. You know. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. They cause somnia. I don't have much more to add. No problem. I don't have may, much may more. May cause add. insomnia. May Perfect. cause insomnia. <laughs> Red pirate Higgs. So well, I was I was gonna say that, <clears throat> you know, um, sometimes warning labels actually l let or kind of give a pass to those who uh, who promote them. For instance, like sure. cigarette companies yeah. can now say, well, the the warning label on the thing gets us off the hook for mm -hmm. any tr co any harm caused by our products because you were fully uh, warned of the consequences and uh, and yeah. took your own risks. So hmm. I don't know, Some, it, maybe it lets them off a hook a little bit, but it, you know, okay. we shouldn't only focus on the, on the Bible. I mean, certainly the Quran, um, you know, uh, Islam means submission. Uh, so, you know, the Quran could be, uh, the warning could be, may lead to total submission of your will to an invisible friend. So I'll throw this out. To the so we should of call it the Bible, on, band, the Bible Band in Boston. Cool. To the extent that the Bible or that cigarette companies put a label on them and it relieves them of some liability, absolutely, uh, of some liability. But they're not going out of their way to find kids and put cigarettes in their mouth. Does that make any sense? Like most people who get cigarettes go out, purchase them, and on their own volition, put them in their own mouths to smoke on their own choice. Whereas religion will select specifically, if you've ever seen Global Atheist News Review, there are there's plans to go into schools and try to get kids. Oh, yeah. There's parents who take their kids without a second thought and let them go away to Sunday school where they get told these stories over and over again as yes. if it was non-fiction you know like where they're around their peers and and they have to be blessed in front of the church or take holy bread and pretend it's a body and and drink grape juice but pretend it's blood like it's it's a cultivated action of non-consensual movements and plans yeah. that mm -hmm. force people into this religious structure what's up john well using your smoking analogy hmm. We've talked before about having an age limit, haven't we? Say, saying that something to the extent that the Bible should be uh, restricted, like um, movies are, with a yeah. categorization. Keep it and what, what, what the, yes, and what they've done in New Zealand is they've set an age limit for purchase of cigarettes, which goes up a year every year. So if you're 14 now, you will never be legally able to buy cigarettes. Oh, right. that's interesting. Really? <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, that's wow. brilliant. Hey, that's yeah. not a bad thing to do. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, I mean, honestly, here's a, just here's everybody a, out of it. Yeah. What's up, Dred? Well, you know, a lot of TV shows uh, and stuff you see on the TV will be prefaced by viewer discretion is advised. Uh, you know, the program contains violence and harsh language and uh, all kinds of violence and all kinds of stuff. 
Of, so it should be reader discretion is advised. Mm. Yeah, yeah, or, or yeah. You know, the, go on parental, ahead. Go. Parental control switch. Mm. Larry, I see you. What's up? Yeah, I was just going to say that warning labels like this are available. I think FFRF has some on their uh, their shop, uh, and and it's easy to make warning labels. <laughs> <laughs> An you can make a whole sheet of them real quick. Yes. Yeah, you know, I wish there was a label that I could make that could just succinctly explain evolution in like maybe like a two by four sticker, and I can go into like the what is it, University of Kentucky? Or I'm sorry, uh, Tennessee. Uh, Knoxville, I'm sorry, University of Tennessee, and then University of Kentucky, and go into those bookstores where I saw the, the, the descriptor of the capital C creator in the biology textbooks, and just like hard sticker, like on the cover, like, hey, by the way, this is inaccurate, read these things, or scan this right. QR code, and you'll understand how actual the, yeah. the pillar of biology actually operates. It's the second right. law of biology. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, I'm going to have to pick on atheist textbooks as well because we can we can sit here and bash on religion all day long but that gets old fast so um eric i know you've read a number of uh of thoughtful critical books what kind of surgeon general warning would you put on any of the ones that you consider your favorite and i'll throw out my own as well mm, all right that's a good question um uh, do not read this book on a plane if religious. For many. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the first thing that comes to mind because mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've done that and I've had, you know, sideways looks from people mm -hmm. because I'm looking at, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm reading, you know, <laughs> God sure. is not great. <laughs> sure, sure, a, sure, a, sure, sure. Yeah. On an airplane and I got people looking at and I'm just like we're all in this boat together but um we gotta get this guy okay, maybe uh warning uh <laughs> warning this book may may change your uh mind warning mm -hmm. this book may may change your doctrination warning this book may change things that you you feel so strongly about mm. uh and 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 don't understand how you could get out of it. Something will like cause that. Somebody can wordsmith it, but will cause the, discomfort. Yeah. Will 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 cause discomfort in a way that <laughs> leads you to more comfort. And, 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 I, and I mean that, and and not not, not just because it's five o'clock and I've had a cocktail already, but, but no, <laughs> it, it, it's something that as you read it, oh, Uzo. I, Uzo, yeah, it's late. As you read it, you may get very uncomfortable, but it also mm. starts to shed some things you never felt comfortable with before. Yeah, it's, if anything, uh, it's like read with either atheist friends or like seek atheist friends. Afterwards. Right. Because yeah. that keeps you yeah. good. Dread, quick to there you, you and then John, mm. what's up? Yeah, well, I was going to say uh, uh, Data's Trading Room and uh, Loma are both watching uh, live right now, so they say hi. Hey, um, but uh, Dada's training room said of the Bible mm. um, that a thorough reading of this book may potentially lead to atheism. Yeah, <laughs> they, oh, they, there you go. I love there that. you go. Good one. May, may cause atheism. That's great. I love that. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, because honestly, that's how I got out by reading the actual book. I didn't just yes. believe yeah. it. When it said yeah, yeah. It, I actually read oh. it. I was like, oh, whoa, with some intelligence. Like, you have to actually like understand how to treat people. And then you read the Bible, you're like, you shouldn't oh. drown babies. You shouldn't lie to me. I think this guy killed that dude. Uh, uh, um, and I had one for atheism as well. Go for it. Go for it, Dredd. Then, John. May cause, may, may cause uh, better critical thinking skills. If you, if you read these critical thinking books, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I also like, found... uh, you know, yeah, because atheism, books around atheism tend to sure. um, you know, apply these various philosophical razors mm. uh, to re various religious beliefs, and, and that leads to clearer thinking. In mm. a more of a cheeky sense, though, it also causes mental exhaustion, because if you're not used to critical thinking, it's a muscle you haven't exercised before, and you are going to be exhausted by the amount of thinking you're going to have to do after reading this book. So mental exhaustion, while rewarding, and a skill that you should be developing. That is an absolute truth. John, what do you think? Warning. Yo. Reading this book in certain company 
risks being shunned. Ah, social pressure. <laughs> may yeah. cause social shunning. May cause trying to get better friends. Mm. <laughs> I recognize that you might need better friends. <laughs> shunning. I have, so, you know, it's weird because I would also throw out not social shun shunning specifically, but getting asked questions that you may not necessarily feel like you have the, the need to answer or privilege to answer. So we ask about question, asking questions. But like whenever I've told people I'm an atheist or I've had an atheist book that I was reading, I have had yeah. people randomly come up to me and be like, well, how the universe get created? I'm yes, like, yeah. dude, <laughs> if I was reading, you know, Narnia, you wouldn't come up and just randomly ask me that. Like, why can't I just enjoy a good book? Like, why do yes. you have to go out of your way to be like, well, explain to me the nature of humanity and wrong. It's like, dude, what I'm about not. the trees? I'm, you know, your morals from? I'm just reading a book. Calm down, guys. Like, why is my hobby mean I have to now explain the universe to everybody? It's the only hobby, mm -hmm. the only position I, where you have to immediately answer the follow-up yeah. question of how did the universe get created? It's the only one. No one else asked that. I'm a plumber. Okay, that's well. If you, if you said that you were a member of another religion, like Buddhism mm. or exactly or Islam or something, they wouldn't ask you that. Yeah, because they would assume <laughs> you have an answer, and it's based on your religion. I worship Thor. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm an atheist. Well, I got questions for you, son. All right, that's right. Uh, George Brown, second and a half. I saw you here with your hands up. What was up? Go for it. Um, I just, I would, the label I would put on the Bible would be, uh, enjoy a pork burger with cheese. <laughs> Whilst wearing a mixed fabric shirt. Nope. Eat more bacon. <laughs> That'll do, yeah. <laughs> Guys, there's a, um, this isn't so much of a book, but I also think some media outlets could observe um, Surgeon General warnings. And one of the ones that I really was paying attention to, I haven't really Ooh. caught up with it in the last couple of years, but the um, atheist. Fox News. No, no, oh. I'm not even going to jump into that. Oh. I'm talking about <laughs> atheist experience when I was working in Sweden. That was like my playlist from the day in to the day out. Because I was Christian when I flew out to Sweden. But I think, uh, or at least I would say I was. But I think the pressure that was released off of me from being in a social climate where everyone was Christian and were openly atheists, let me be able to listen to things that I wasn't, that I didn't feel like I could listen to out loud uh, when I was in the States, particularly in Georgia, even Atlanta. And so when I was watching the atheist experience, I was finding myself asking the same questions that the callers were asking. Atheist experience is a call-in show where you can talk to a couple of atheists who are very well-versed in dealing with apologetics and people who claim that they believe in God for very bad reasoning. And then by the end of the show, the, the callers always get angry and hang up, but they never made a good point. And when you hear the points enough times, you realize that's the same call. That's almost like the same argument that that last guy used. And yeah. it's not any better than it was this time. And it's the same argument that I was using and it's not any better since I've still had it. So, you know, it goes back to what Eric was saying may cause discomfort, may cause realization that you're wrong. And, and then actually, here's my last Surgeon General, may actually, may actually make you enjoy the feeling of being wrong. Is, there a, is, there, is that even a word? Like when you realize you're wrong, a good, it's a good feeling sometimes. It's a good start for the, for finding the next level of truth, you know? Yes. Exactly. That's yeah, how science yeah. works. It's mm -hmm. like being wrong. Like, I hate it being wrong, but now yeah. I'm like, oh, I kind of like being wrong. Now, now, now yeah. I know it. Now yeah. I can get rid of it and chuck it and get yeah. some better ideas. So here's one for the, the God delusion then. Uh, warning could destroy dogma. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Dread Pirate. Dread you. Yeah. yeah so I, I just wanted to, uh, Dada's trading room, he's on a roll here. He oh. said, for atheistic book, warning. This book may leave you with more questions than answers. Oh, dread. Oh, I'm sorry. The book of questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It may leave you yeah. with more questions than answers. Yeah. Absolutely. Questioning is good. You know, that is the awesome. point. That's essentially science in a way, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Always does. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's never a bad thing to have more questions. You can still get answers. Is That's a beautiful thing. But honestly, what science is about is not so much answers, but explanations. Yes. And the explanations, while, while nominal and based off models, are so 
broad in what they answer or comprehensive that you're going to have questions about, okay, well, what's the next step right. about this part? <clears throat> about yeah. this part? What hasn't been answered yet? What's kind of ambiguous still? I want to know as much as I can with this system. It's really great. Yeah. Guys, uh, let's see. I think we did a really good round table. I'm just going to do a quick summary of some of the highlights <laughs> of the show, and then we can get to plugging. So uh, may Surgeon General write, write, uh, labels for holy books may cause raised expectations to unrealistic levels, may lead to excessive belief in invisible friends, may also lead to chronic episodes of hypocrisy, make sure to use your best cherry picker, and this gives you a gold-plated reason to stop thinking. Also, may contain imaginary uh, mythical figures and, <laughs> and lead to gull increased gull gullibility and self-harm. And then I think uh, one of the best ones we got from the listener comments for sure is, may cause atheism <laughs> <laughs> love it yes. i love it i love it i love it that if i was going to oh, get man. anyone that's yeah. fantastic. do we have any listener questions for this yeah. week for oh listener statement? dang it dang it dang it dang it. i didn't even set it up though i would like to give a, a shout out to free thought channel who said great show guys thank you so much uh, i think that came from you john appreciate cool. it uh we got we have listener comments all of them are unfortunately very long i don't think we have uh the time but we will jump back into them first start next episode sound good okay then sure for now how about this we'll do a closeout session john richards where can we find all of your many channels and, and antics going on well it's all, all on Jeez. free thought free thought channel i've shortened the name from free thought yeah. productions channel to free thought channel so free thought channel i like it yeah, yeah. yeah. In a nutshell. So the, it's been going on and I've now got more assistance. So for, for example, tonight's Global Atheist News Review featuring Dread and Ty and other opinionated panelists will actually not be hosted by me. For the first time, we have my co-host Tercia Duplessis in the chair. She will be providing you with the items to react to. Very, very nice. Enjoy. I, do, I also like how South African names sound like Isaac Asimov characters in sci-fi novels. It's <laughs> really, really great. There you go. I think yeah. there is inspiration there. But anyway, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs. How do we yes. find your program? How, how do we find your program? Go to YouTube Free Thought Channel. Cool. Yeah. Make sure uh, you, you give can your find uh, you can find my channel at Mind Pirate on YouTube. M I N D P Y R A T E. I live stream this uh, show when I'm on it. Uh, every Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And I also, uh, when I'm on the Global Atheist News Review, I live stream that at 11 a.m. on Sunday PDT. So if you uh, go there, please like and subscribe. And uh, thank you. Nice. Also, just super highlight shout out to the show. We got calls from England, Canada, and Greece. Wow, that's for the first time. Let's go. Yeah. Showing some respect. Eric, anything that you'd like to plug before next week? Uh, yeah, probably need to do this and say, here is my view. Beautiful. You guys, awesome. we got all this. And then, oh, wow. the more than Makes I Gregory. Imagine radio. that was hand built. <laughs> Imagine that thing was hand built. It's bigger than all the buildings. Uh, no kidding. And yeah. Uh, by volunteers and, yep. but yeah thanks for letting me pop on today I, I sorry if it was a distraction but no, no good no, conversation good to have you yeah, yeah we're happy to have you anytime <clears throat> uh let's see george brown two one slash two th anything you recommend we check out before next week muted you're muted <laughs> I'm just trying to practice my lip reading. I said every time good. you ask. I'm sorry. I, I have a cough switch on this microphone. It, it was pressed. Um, every time you ask me that, I I forget what I was going to say. So it's I okay. <laughs> it's okay. There might be. You got to write it down before the show. That's he'll right. He'll remember it. He'll remember it just before we're about to close. I, it's all good. That's, that's a good name for the channel. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Okay, so you can check out my stuff on Let's Chat. It's this YouTube channel. Uh, if, if you're watching the video, uh, it's YouTube Let's Chat. And uh, I have these videos, but I'm also just, you know, having a good time, enjoying talking with my friends on a regular basis. This is some of the highlights of my weekend. And so, Larry, anytime you want to close up the show, I'm totally good. But 
please explain to me what atheism is and what it's all about because i still oh, am well, a little confused about that. i happen to have written a book about that what what's the yeah. surgeon general warning on it oh uh <laughs> question everything ah. <laughs> <laughs> No, my book is called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. Uh, oh, my, somebody's from my website, uh, I mean, my internet content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button because we have all of our radio shows there archived. We have some atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism. On YouTube, you can find me by searching for Doubter 5, Larry Rhodes, or Digital Free Thought, either one. Uh, you can find the show on Apple, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, or podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, if you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, go to recoveringfromreligion.org. You can find help there. Um, thank you for watching and joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.